The first thing we normally get is an inquiry from the art director. And she may lay out some parameters for where they want to shoot, um, what kind of sizes they're thinking about, whether it's a day, day, night, night. Obviously, we also want to know whether it's a period movie. So there's going to be satellite dishes that need to be removed, uh, whether the season may change. So we may need to shoot in spring, but create a backdrop that looks like fall. But hopefully the art director will have, have all of that information ready for us and uh, she'll present that as a, as a package. Today I'm uh, shooting some shots that have been sent to me by the art department and I'm trying to uh, cover um, a backdrop that's going to be going into the studio. I take pictures during the daytime and I mark my positions for the tripod and then I will come back and shoot exactly the same camera positions at night time. What's important to know is whether the set is going to be built up on a platform, on a rostrum or not, or whether it's going to be built on the studio floor, because that will affect the height that I shoot this image from. Um, and it's also important to know um, what the distance or what, how big the studio is and how big the set is and what distance away the drop is from the uh, set, because that will also affect how much, and obviously the size of the drop, will affect how many shots I shoot when I go out on location. If you're building an apartment on stage, you want to have the view from the apartment. So you have to think in terms of what floor is this apartment on? Is it, is it low? Is it high? Is it the 50th floor in New York or a penthouse? Or is it the third floor in Queens and looking out on somebody's backyard? It's... Uh, it, it, sort of is script driven. I mean, sometimes it's more simple, sometimes it's more complicated. Generally, the position for the camera has already been selected by the art director. Once we get to that position, it's important to take into account horizon line and scale. Horizon because the horizon line has to match the camera position on set, and scale because obviously the building has to look the right size outside the window on set. Vanishing points are also extremely important because you have to take into account where the camera position is within the room and therefore where the lines on the buildings are pointing towards. The size of a backdrop is driven by the size of the windows that are going to be looking at it and of course the placement of the windows. You may think that if you've got a six foot by six foot window you need a six foot by six foot backdrop. Of course that's not the case because that would only work if you were actually sticking it on the glass which would look horrible. So in fact, a, if you've got a six by six window, typically you're gonna want a 12 foot by 18 foot drop as a, as a minimum to cover that space, but it all comes down to sight lines. So what you really wanna do is, is actually plan out the sight lines, given the camera height, and figure out where do I start to see off the top of the drop, where do I start to see off the bottom of the drop, and go from there. So there isn't really a, an answer for, for one size fits all. It, it's totally dependent on the way you've designed your set. It's generally better to have us shoot the backdrops than to do it in-house. Obviously, we've been doing this for a long time. I've been shooting plates for 25 years. And so during those 25 years, we've probably made every single mistake that it's possible to make and we do learn by our mistakes. Roscoe kind of invented the day-night backdrop, and so we have the most experience about working with exposures and uh, different um, levels of light for the nighttime and for the daytime shots. And also learning about um, knowing how to align each shot directly on top of each other. Typically, we're doing 10 of these a week whereas the average art director may do 10 custom backdrops in his entire career. 
The backdrop has to work on set, on camera, in different lighting situations for the camera when they're filming in the studio. And that's something that Roscoe has had a lot of experience with, of knowing how to uh, put together the correct amount of uh, lighting levels and, and also in the printing process. Although the art director will ask us uh, for something, what we try to do is give them more than they ask for. You're not just getting a photographer when you when you work with Roscoe and work with Soft Drop. You actually, for a very short time, add an extra member of your art department. Um, so we try to integrate seamlessly as, as a member of the team rather than being just an outside vendor. It's a very iterative process. I mean, we send something out, we get comments back, and we go back and forth multiple times before we actually fix the, the, the final look of the backing. Once we have the images ready to, to work on, they go off to our image processing department in Connecticut. These are people who are dedicated to making backdrops. It's all they do all day long. It's not just putting the images together. It's very important to establish some parameters for the actual image itself. So we're very particular about creating a good black point. We're very careful to establish a white point. Um, but it's also important that we find the right balance between those two levels. We also have to think about what's going to happen when you backlight it. So it's not just enough to make a good day image, but we need to make sure that the day image that's there, which is going to become half of what the night image is, that the two don't fight each other. We've got a pretty good idea of what needs to be done and how to go about it. So it's it's pretty much a smooth, seamless operation. I mean, it's, it's just built into the way we do things. Next time, we're going to talk about how to install the soft drop once it's been printed um, and the process for basically taking it from the printer onto your stage.